Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. What a delight to be with you, and thank you so much for the honor you show us by allowing us to be part of your day. Many people listen to the broadcast in their car, and you're somewhat of a captive audience. Well, thank you for allowing us to capture your time, and hopefully we encourage you as you drive. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Ruth and chapter 2. Ruth chapter 2, get your own copy of God's Word and join me there unless you're you're driving your car, of course, but get your Bible out and join me in Ruth chapter 2. I'll begin to read at verse 14 here in just a moment. I've got a gospel tract here in my hand. Do you know what a tract is? A gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. It's an evangelism tool. It's a tool that's been a powerful use for for centuries, really, in having the gospel go farther by us handing to lost people God's plan of salvation. We have 40-some tracks we want to put into your hand in a sample packet. I'll say more about that here in just a moment. So get your Bible, get something with which you can jot some notes, please. Now, my friend, if I were to summarize all of Ruth chapter 2 by using one Bible verse from the New Testament, I would use Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19. Now, listen. Listen, my friend. There are five key verses in the chapter 4 of Philippians that you ought to memorize. I mean, you ought to know them. Probably most believers already do know them by heart. They just don't remember the reference for them. I think every child of God needs to memorize Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, and those are verses on dealing with worry. Then we need to memorize Philippians 4, 8, which deals with our godly mind. It'll help our sanctification. The next one is verse 13, which says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Now, you already knew that one, didn't you? But the one I want to use as the capstone to summarize all of Ruth 2 is this one, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. In Ruth chapter 2, God is supplying the needs of Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi. And just because God is a God of grace, he throws in a godly love affair as well. Isn't that great? Join me, please. Ruth chapter 2. A moment ago, I mentioned the gospel tracts. At the end of this broadcast, my announcer is going to make known to you three ways by which you can contact us. And if you'll do that, giving us your name and your mailing address, we'll send you a free sample packet. The packet contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. There's 40 tracts in there. You're going to find great tools. You're going to find some that you really love and some that, well, you're not going to be your favorites, but that's just part of life. But we want to give you some tools to expand your witness. One of the tracks in that sample packet is entitled The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. This track opens with a personal testimony of God's grace and goodness in a man's life, but then he squanders his grace. He squanders God's goodness. He wastes his time his talents, and his treasure. Now, I mention this track for this reason. This track not only shares the gospel, but it also will challenge the heart of every believer that you and I not be squandering our time, our talents, and our treasures in the time that God's given us to serve him here on planet Earth. The Lord's coming soon, I believe, but let's use our time, our talent, and our treasures while we're here for the glory of God. The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. You're going to like this track. Please be ready when my announcer gives our contact information. You can go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. 
All right, if your Bible's open to the book of Ruth in chapter 2, beginning at verse 14, here is what the Bible says. And Boaz said unto her, that is Ruth, at mealtime come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he, Boaz, reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed, and left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not, and let fall some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. So she gleaned in the field until even. Stop, please, right there. These three verses, verses 14 to 16, are really not filled with theological teaching. What they do is they help us to understand how the romance story between Boaz and Ruth here is going to progress. It is Boaz, the man who is taking the lead in pushing any future relationships. My title for verses 14 to 16 is The Welcome, The Welcome. The first paragraph, verses 1 to 7, I titled, The Work. The second paragraph, verses 8 to 13, I titled, The Words. Now, verses 14 to 16, I titled, The Welcome. What we have here is an introduction to lunch. Years ago, I heard a preacher preaching in the book of Ruth, and he came to this part, and he titled his sermon this way. Can we do lunch sometime? (laughs) Can we do lunch sometime? That's exactly what Boaz is manipulating here with Ruth. Let me give you some words beginning with the letter I. First of all, in verse 14, we find the invitation. The invitation. Verse 14 opens with Boaz inviting Ruth to eat lunch, not off in some corner somewhere, That would be what she would do as a typical Gentile in that time and place. She would not eat with the Jews, but that's not his invitation. Boaz invites Ruth to eat right alongside his Jewish workers. She was invited to eat even the food that he provided for his Jewish workers. In the Gospels, if we read them, you're going to see Jesus being open and close to Gentiles and sinners. Unlike the Pharisees and Sadducees of Jesus' era, Jesus showed kindness to Gentiles. And here at this point in our story, Boaz is simply a clear picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's showing kindness to a Gentile lady. Uh, That was the invitation. In verse 14, we find the initiation, the initiation. In the second half of verse 14, it reads like this. He, Boaz, reached her parched corn and she did eat. Well, that's not theological, but Boaz sure did not just say words about inviting her to lunch. He acted. He initiated kindness by physically handing Ruth some food. Here's a guy interested in more than just a woman's needs. I think Boaz is interested in this lady herself. Maybe Ruth was hesitant to go ahead and eat what was provided there because she wasn't Gentile. And perhaps the other workers were scowling at Ruth for being even near the food table. I don't know. But what I do know is that Boaz made the first move. He initiated this act of care and kindness and grace. My next word is the word instruction based upon verses 15 and 16. In these two verses, I see three things. I see his command, I see Boaz's compassion, and then I see his concern. Command, compassion, and concern. Boaz is here commands in verse 15. His command was direct and was directed at his workers. He told them to let Ruth glean, not just behind them as would be normal, but she could glean among them. She was allowed to gather where the first harvest stalks were being gathered. In verse 16, we see his compassion. He said to the workers, let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her. 
Now, putting that phrase into Mark Smith lingo, it means that he told his hired workers to pull out some of the bundles of grain that they had picked and let them fall and drop for her to get right there, getting from the first gathering itself. And finally, we see Boaz had concern. Boaz was concerned that some of the Jewish workers might criticize Ruth or try to push her back from gathering alongside of them. Your Bible has two words, both beginning with the letter R. One comes at the end of verse 15. There you'll see the word reproach. And then at the end of verse 16, you'll see the word rebuke. The word reproach means to act in a way to cause shame. I'm going to say that again. The word reproach means to act in a way to cause shame. Boaz did not want any Jewish person to make Ruth feel like she was a second class person. But then in verse 16, the word rebuke, that word means to scold or to refuse what she is doing. It means to communicate to another person that what they are doing is wrong and sinful. Well, the kindness of Boaz may not have been shared by all there in the Jewish society, those that are there in the field. But here, Boaz, the Lord of the harvest, sets the tone for all of his workers. In the first century church, there were struggles. There was ethnic struggles. There were ethical struggles and ethnic struggles. The Jewish believers there struggled to accept as equals at first the Gentiles who were coming to Christ. Well, friend, in our present day, we still have similar ethnic and ethical struggles. The book of James addresses some of these. That tells us how prevalent it was because the first New Testament book, the book of James that was written chronologically deals with ethnic and ethical struggles. In James chapter 2, verse 5, we read, Hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? This passage before us is a good one for gospel workers, for those who want to see lost people saved. The generosity of Boaz with his grain is a great picture of how generous you and I who know Christ need to be with the bread of life. We dare not hold it back from anyone, no matter of their ethnic background, no matter their ethical struggles, no matter how woefully into wickedness they may be. They need the bread of life. Also, as we do gospel work, we have to beware that we never make sinners feel rebuked or reproached by our attitude towards them. Now, listen, we must tell all people that they're sinners. They're sinful before a holy God, but let us be quick to then turn and share with them the grace of God, the grace work of God in his son, Jesus Christ, who God moved first. He initiated, just like Boaz, God initiated that while we are yet in sin, Christ died for us. He offers us the parched corn of salvation and says, dip with me and become mine. Friend, receive Christ as your savior today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.